Assalamu alaikum. Many people maybe want to seek knowledge, but they don't know how to. They don't know really how to start, what books to read or study. And I'm going to share with you some of the things on to help you how to seek knowledge from personal experiences and what I have learned from my mashayikh. Uh, may Allah preserve them all. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is, and if you can, this is a bonus. It's not a must. If you can, learn Arabic. It's very, very important because if you learn Arabic, then the gates of all the references in Islam will be open for you. As you know, the classical scholars, they all wrote in Arabic. And even the, uh, the modern scholars, they mostly, not mostly, I think all of them write in Arabic. So, uh, and not many of these books, most of these books are not translated. It's an ocean of books that have been authored and written in Islam, various topics and matters in Islam. And not all of them, most of them, are not translated in, in English. So you're going to get like maybe 2% translated only. But don't worry, this 2% is, is very, very good and important. May Allah bless and reward the people who are translating the books of the scholars. Anyways, if you can, learn Arabic. Nara, anna al-Islam, lamma kana fi awj izzati wa quwwati, dakhala al-nasu fi din Allah, وَتَعَلَّمُوا اللُّغَةَ الْعَرَبِيَّةِ وَمِنَ الْفُرْسِ وَالْرُومِ مَنْ كَانُوا أَئِمَّةً فِي الدِّينِ وَأَئِمَّةً فِي الْعَرَبِيَّةِ القاموس المحيط مرجع الناس في العرب في اللغة الآن وقبل الآن من مؤلفه؟ نعم الفيروزاباد من قريش ولا من بني هاشم؟ نعم لا هذا ولا هذا فارسي ومع ذلك هو مرجع اللغة العربية البخاري إمام المحدثين يعني إمام ناقلة سنة الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام عربي ولا غير عربي غير عربي لأنه في الفتوحات الإسلامية كانت الغلبة للمسلمين الذين يتكلمون باللغة العربية فتعلم الناس العربية ضرورة أنه لا يمكن الوصول إلى فهم الدين إلا إلا باللغة العربية. If you can't, no problem. The first thing that you have, you need to have, and this is very very important. This is a prerequisite, yeah, is to have sincerity, yeah. Do it for the sake of Allah. Don't seek knowledge because you want to have self fulfillment or you're just impressed with yourself, you know, عجب. Or you want to do it for the sake of people to gain followers and attention and, you know, open a YouTube channel or a da'wah or whatever it is. If you want to do that, then don't start. If this is your intention. Or you want to do it for money and kind of use your, your knowledge to gain money or f anything like that. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ warned us against that. And he said in one hadith, he said, the first people who will be judged in the day of judgment are three. And one of them he mentioned is a seeker of knowledge and a reciter of Quran. And Allah would tell him in the day of judgment, what have you done in your life? He would say, I seek knowledge and I, I taught it and I recited the Quran and I taught it. And Allah would say, you lied, kathabt. You have said that you have done that to, for the people to say that you are uh, a scholar and you are a reciter. And they have done that. They have said that about you. And then he will be dragged to the hellfire on his face. So this is between you and Allah. Okay, Nobody's judging you. Just have sincerity and do it for the sake of Allah. Do it because you want to lift the ignorance from you to apply what you have learned. Very important. You, you do it for the sake of Allah and you apply it. Some people just say, you know, gain knowledge, but they don't apply it. You don't see it in themselves. So with knowledge, your iman should grow. Your practice, your acts of worship should also increase. That's number one. Number two, uh, memorizing the Quran. Very, very important. If you can, please memorize the Quran. Because this is the source, this is the main source, this is Kalam Allah, this is the words of Allah. So memorizing the Quran, start that journey, okay? And don't make it like, if I don't memorize the Quran, I cannot learn about other things. No, simultaneously. Have a, have a session, weekly, daily, whatever is convenient for you, but prioritize. Make it a, a big part of your life that you memorize the Quran. And yeah, you, don't, you don't have to rush and don't lose hope. Yeah, so, so memorize the Quran. As much as you can, keep on memorizing until you die. Uh, inshallah, one day you will you will complete it. There are people who complete it in one year. There in six months. There are people four years, eight years, nine years, ten years, twenty years. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There's no time limit. There's no expiry for this. Keep on going with this. This is 
one of the main things, the main thing of, of seeking knowledge. خير العلم ومفتاحه ورأسه أن يعتني طالب العلم بكتاب الله عز وجل وأن يجعل لكتاب الله نصيبا من طلبه العلم. The second thing is that also you have to have some reference about explanation, تفسير of القرآن. And if we're talking about English, uh, the the translation of محسن علي خان and تقي الدين هلالي. I don't have the, the book here, but um, you can find it online, you can find it everywhere. This is very, very authentic, and it's according to the belief, uh, the correct belief of, of Islam and Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Yeah, this is how they, they translated uh, the Quran. It's very good. Okay, so now we get to the belief section. Aqeedah. What should you read and study? And sorry, I don't want to say read, study. Because reading is you open a book and you just read it. And if you want to seek knowledge, don't do that. This is not seeking knowledge. This is just you reading, basically. Okay? No, you have to study these books. Okay, first book. You need this book. الأصول الثلاثة The Three Fundamentals of Islam uh, by Sheikh uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahmatullahi alayhi Very very nice beginner's book but also very important Till this day people are explaining scholars are explaining this book Many of the scholars that I know have explained this book I don't know any of the scholars who haven't explained this book It's that important, that valuable Sheikh Al-Fawzan now he's also repeating He's doing it again, explaining this book again. Uh, may, Allah have, uh, may Allah preserve him. So uh, this is a very good book. It basically talks about the three fundamentals. What are the three fundamentals of Islam? Knowing your God, knowing your Lord, knowing your, your prophet, and knowing your religion. And knowing your religion. These are the three fundamentals. This is what the author means about this. And I would recommend that you get the explanation and commentary of one of the scholars. You'll gain more knowledge and maybe you, you might misunderstand some of the concepts that are mentioned in this, in this book. I would, I would recommend the commentary of uh, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen, rahimahullah. Yeah? So first is three fundamentals. Let's stick to Aqeedah first. Another book in Aqeedah and belief is Kitab al-Tawheed, my personal favorite. Kitab al-Tawheed, the book of monotheism, also written by Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah. And I also uh, recommend that you get commentary and explanation of one of the scholars, the contemporary score, scholars. And I would also recommend Ibn Uthaymeen. I, I love his explanation. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm biased, but his explanations is amazing. And I'm talking, yani, when, I, when I seek knowledge or I'm seeking knowledge, I, I, um, uh, his, his Arabic, of course, I'm talking about the Arabic explanation to it. It's, it's beautiful. And I think it's, it's also very valuable and beautiful in English too. Yeah? So... Kitab al-Tawheed. This basically talks about, you know, what is monotheism, what are the acts of worship, how should you do them. Not how should you do them from a practical point of view, but the belief part of it. Okay? So the aqeedah part. And what is shirk, what is polytheism, what is kufr, what are the acts of kufr, kufr and polytheism that might take you out of the folds of Islam. What should you avoid? You know, like magic, like believing in amulets, like uh, things like that. Yeah? Beautiful book. You have to study that too. Number two, is it? Number number three, right? No, number two. Let's stick to this. Because I talked about tafsir also. But that's not counted. That's like, uh, you have to have that. But these are, these are other books. Okay, anyways. Number three. 
What about you learn in uh, learn about your salah? How to perform salah? Very important. Sifat Salat al Nabi by uh, Sheikh Muhammad Nasr, Deen al Albani, Albani, and on the other. And uh, this is in English the Salah, uh, the Prophet's uh, the Prophet's prayer described, the description of the Prophet's prayers. And uh, the the unique thing about this is because uh, al Albani is of course an expert in Hadith. So he got all the authentic uh, narrations and hadith of the Prophet, how, what he explained and what he said about Salah and how to perform it. Beautiful book. If you can get this book as it is, no explanation, it's good. And I didn't know that it was actually translated in English. May Allah reward who translated this. Uh, if you can get an explanation of this book is also very good. Okay, There are some scholars who have explained this book. Okay, so Sifat Salat in Nabi. What else do we got? So we finished Aqeedah. We got some Salah, some Fiqh in there. We got more fiqh books. Yeah, this one is good. Manhaj al-Salikin. Sorry, I don't have it in English, but I'm sure that there is and translated a copy of this. Manhaj al-Salikin by Sheikh al-Alama Sa'di, Abd al-Rahman Sa'di. Sheikh Sa'di, rahmatullahi alayhi, is the teacher of Ibn Uthaymeen. May Allah have mercy on him. May Allah have mercy on both of them. A beautiful book. It talks to you about jurisprudence practical things what is purity what is impurity what are the times of salah how to perform salah also is here fasting uh, ablution things like that also beautiful book there are many books about fiqh by the way many thousands maybe millions wallahi because you know fiqh is a limitless ocean uh, yeah uh, and there are of course fiqh in madahib and there are fiqh that is just you know concise about all the madahib anyway this is a good beginner's book and then later, inshallah, when Allah opens doors for you and opportunities, you will you will get to know more more uh, resources about fiqh. Okay, we finished fiqh. What else do we need? Okay, this is good. Now we got uh, biography. You have to know about your Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, on the other first prize winner uh, from Saudi, it is the sealed nectar. The sealed nectar by uh, Al Alama Safiyur Rahman, and uh, this beautiful book. It was actually written in, in, in Arabic. Then it got translated into other languages. And one of them is English. Uh, beautiful book. You have to know about your prophet. What happened in his life and the message and the da'wah and everything like that. Okay? Sealed nectar. Next, what do we have? Let's, uh, let's go to hadith now. Now, as a beginner, I don't recommend that you get into the science of hadith and science of narration and all that. You don't need that, to be honest. This is the 40 Nawawi hadith. The 40 hadith of the Imam and Nawawi. Imam al nawi collected, collected 42 ahadith. It's so actually 42. And these are authentic ahadith. Talks about various topics in Islam. Aqeedah, jurisprudence, etiquette, anything, many things like that. Beautiful book. Get a commentary. Reading these ahadith is very good and very uh, beneficial. But also getting commentary so you really understand these ahadith uh, that Imam al nawi collected. Yeah? Beautiful book. Also, again... Ibn Uthaymeen has beautiful explanation of this book. Many, many scholars, by the way, explain this book. But my favorite, Ibn Uthaymeen. 14 hours. What else we got? Okay, let's go back to Aqeedah now. Level 2 Aqeedah. Okay. These are kind of the same thing, but um, I'll just mention them both. You know, if you can find, if you can get them both, good. If you can't, one of them is, is sufficient, inshallah. Sharh Al-Aqeedah al wasitiyah Sharh Al-Aqeedah al wasitiyah Beautiful, powerful book. This is by Shaykh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. And it talks about some of the fundamentals and the principles of, of Islam, beliefs. So it tells you about how should we believe or what do we believe when it comes to angels, when it comes to you know, the six pillars of Iman. And then when it comes to the names and attributes of Allah, how should you believe in them? How should you understand them? Uh, it talks about the Sahaba. What do we believe in the Sahaba? It talks about uh, many various things in, in Aqeedah. And this book, this I you cannot read it by itself. I don't recommend it. Uh, read it uh, through an explanation. Like read the explanation of this book uh, from a scholar. Uh, some scholars went so deep inside that the book took, like it's a big fat, like a couple of volumes of books. Some uh, scholars did one nice small book uh, in, 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 this, uh, in explaining this book. This is Sharh. This is by whom? Uh, let me see. Wait one second. I'm not sure, but anyways... Get the sharh of this book. It's uh, very important, yeah? So this is Sharh Al-Aqeed al wasitiyah And also, there is also Sharh Aqeedat Ahl Sunnah Wal-Jama'ah. Sharh Aqeedat Ahl Sunnah Wal-Jama'ah. This is by Ibn Uthaymeen. 
If you can find it in English, this is also very good. This is also very good, and it kind of talks about the same thing. It kind of talks about the same thing. Now, one might ask my, of course, my dear Salafi brothers would say, where is Sharh al-Sunnah al-Imam al-Barbahari? Personal opinion, I might be wrong, but this is just personal opinion. It's, it's not required. It's not Because if you have Aqid al wasliyah and Aqid al sunnah wal-Jama'ah, this is enough and this is good, clear. It talks about the same matters that Imam al-Barbahari, rahmatullahi alayhi, have explained, inshallah. So, um, these are the books that you need to study. And these are, like I said, from personal experience. I could be wrong. You can add more books. You can remove some books. Allahu alam. Yani. But these have been praised highly by the scholars. And they have ex been explained uh, by the scholars many, many times. Many scholars. So I would recommend these. And they're really, yani, I would say beginner books. You would, you, inshallah, you will understand them, inshallah. Taib, when I say study, what do I mean? I mean you don't just read them. You have to study. You have to write your opinions. Write your understandings. Highlight uh, all these books. Need your your ink. Your thoughts have to be there with it. Yeah, this is how you study and learn. Uh, sorry, don't just learn. No, understand. There's a lot of mashallah young brothers who have very good uh, memory. They would memorize things. They would memorize yani some of the mutun, uh, the you know the statements of the ulama and all that. It's very good. I to definitely encourage that. But don't do that and then neglect understanding. Fee, fee, yani there is a difference between between understanding and learning or understanding and memorizing. Yeah, And a lot of the brothers, not a lot, but some of the brothers, I would say, may Allah forgive us all and guide, guide us all, is that they memorize and they know these books, but they can't apply it. They don't understand how to apply it practically. This is very, very important. If you, if you study these books and you don't know how to apply it, then what's the use? Right? So understand these books. This is the most important thing. Okay, when it comes to studying, what do you need? This is, I'm getting a bit too detailed now. But uh, inshallah, you'll find it beneficial. Write, like I said, write. What do you need to write with? A pen, of course, but not just any pen. This is kind of specific, but inshallah, it will help you. A 0 0.7 millimeter pen, the thickness of the line. This is important because some of the pens, they're very, you know, the line is very thick, you know, al khat. And so when you write, it's, it, it's just, it's not good. It's very thick. You can't write everywhere. It just takes up a lot of space. So I don't recommend this. And 0 0.5 is too thin. You can barely see it. 0 0.7 is what I recommend. 0 0.7 uh, millimeters. Then you need to have markers or highlighters. I don't need to explain what you need to do with that. Okay, so you like something, something is important, a very important statement, fundamentals, you just highlight them. And this is also good for your studying and seeking knowledge. Also, what you need is some post-it notes. Post-it notes are also very good and convenient and useful, inshallah. You write some of these things. Maybe it's not, you know, uh, it's not. there's no room for it to write your comments or opinions or just like summarize things. So you write them here and you stick them on the page or on the side of the page, whatever. Yeah. And last but not least, this is just a bonus and I really like them and I use them a lot now, is uh, some kind of uh, stick, you know, sticky things or bookmarks. You, you put them if you like something or there's a page that's important. You don't have to look for it. You just stick that note and you're good to go. This is what you need to start seeking knowledge. And inshallah, once you take that path, doors will open up. عن أبي الدرداء رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من سلك طريقا يبتغي فيه علما سهل الله له طريقا إلى الجنة وإن الملائكة لتضع أجنحتها لطالب العلم رضا بما صنع وإن العالم لا يستغفر له من في السماوات والأرض حتى الحيتان في الماء وفضل العالم على العابد كفضل القمر على سائر الكواكب وإن العلماء ورثة الأنبياء وإن الأنبياء لم يورثوا دينارا ولا درهما وإنما ورثوا العلم فمن أخذه أخذ بحظ وافر رواه أبو داود والترمذي 
May Allah bless you. And may Allah make you successful. And may Allah make us all sincere for his sake that we seek knowledge and gain beneficial knowledge to save ourselves from the hellfire. Then we save our loved ones. Then, inshallah, we become beneficial to the ummah. هذا ما عندي والله أعلم وصلي اللهم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين